Welcome back to Down the Wire. I'm your host, Brian Costa. And obviously, if you guys have been paying attention to the sports world or really just have been online the past uh, 12 hours or so, we got some pretty significant sports news to cover. Um, for those of you who are watching the Cincinnati Bengals, Buffalo Bills Monday Night Football game last night, um, you would have obviously seen the horrific injury involving Bill's safety, DeMar Hamlin. Um, went down on the field. It's now been diagnosed as a cardiac arrest, and he's currently in a buff uh, a, in a correction Cincinnati hospital. Um, little to no word has been really left on his condition, other than other than the fact that he is in critical condition. And you know, I typically like to be in kind of an uplifting mood on the show today. I'm going to try to, you know, bring my best perspective on this, but. Obviously, he's with some pretty serious news. Um, I do want to say that we have a guest on the show today. He's been on the show before. Uh, Bryant Johnson, uh, welcome back to the show. I do wish it was under better circumstances, but I'm glad to have you here today. I'm very happy to be back. Obviously, circumstances you never want to see, but um, I mean, we're just going to try to dive into it and uh, see what we can you know, unfold for the rest of the audience here. Yeah, absolutely. So... Um, Bryant, like you and I, we were getting ready for the Monday night football game. Um, we actually went out to Buffalo wild wings with a bunch of people from our fantasy football group chat, and it was gearing up to be a really good night. Honestly, um, probably one of the better games of the year going into it, to be honest with you. Yeah, I was very excited to see this game Two a good head to head matchup, two very high powered offenses, two of the best quarterbacks in the league, arguably. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was excited to see what the Bills defense was going to do, uh, to defend, Probably the best wide receiver core in the NFL. Yeah. Um, but uh, it got cut short. Nobody likes to see that. But it, it, honestly, no, after that happened, nobody cared about anything except for the health of yeah. Hamlin. Yeah. And I will say this. It was one of the crazier things I've ever seen when watching professional sports. And, you know, I've I've seen some very horrific injuries, um, you know, in my 21 years seeing Gordon Hayward snap his leg in the opening night of the Celtics of the Celtics regular season. I remember that gruesome injury, obviously um, some other ones as well. And, you know, some others that we'll probably bring up during the course of this episode. But um, what was really scary about this injury is the fact that, um, you know, he got hit in the chest. He didn't look like his head ricocheted back, anything of the sort. And, you know, Hamlin got up all right. He was, you know, he stood up for a split second, I think took a step or two. And then just lights out completely kind of just went out. Originally, when I saw it, I mean, I'm not a doctor or anything of the sort, but um, for someone who has done martial arts for many years and stuff like that, um, there could be something like a blood choke or I didn't know if, it, you know, maybe it was like a liver shot where it's kind of a delayed reaction. And, you know, I, maybe he was going to get up after the fact. But um, once he was down for that prolonged period of time, it obviously was not that. Yeah, I actually I've been on the web a lot just searching to see some answers to this because um like i'm very interested in medicine and things like that of yeah. the nature um and i came across a couple of videos by all mds um on tiktok and various other platforms sure and they said it's something called like a comotio cortex or something it, yeah it's comeo cortis comeo cortis something of the something sport, like yeah. that about um i saw a similar video as you yeah yeah the trauma to the chest causing the like ventricle of your heart to quiver instead of pump so it causes like your blood pressure to drop to zero and um as a result like it takes about six seconds i think they said really so him standing up was that six seconds and then he, uh, as soon as his blood pressure dropped to zero he passed right out and wow was, uh, yeah i mean i mean that's crazy too cardiac I mean, arrest right away yeah from what i saw from these videos and obviously this is still kind of speculative right now as to whether that caused the cardiac arrest or you know potentially he had a you know a pre-existing condition something like a hank gathers or a, or a reggie lewis who you know each had you know traumatic uh collapses on the court and you know had their own incidents um that still remains to be seen as to what could have potentially caused this but um, like you said, they're um, from the way that these MDs and stuff are describing it, there's almost like a split second in which the heart is almost like kind of resetting its cycle to where if you to hit it just right, it could cause an arrhythmia and basically, you know, take, you know, just completely throw everything off rhythm. Yeah, I think that's that's what happens is right when your heart's almost resetting for the next pump. If you get hit in that, like it's like a millisecond window, like this is a freak accident. Nobody. This this happens to like less than one percent of the population. Yeah, doctors were saying like they only read about this in textbooks, and here we are watching it on live television. Like I I never expected to see that in the NFL, 
and it honestly pains me to have to see it like I didn't want to. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, unfortunately, Bryant, like this is something that, you know, uh, for us, this is, uh, you know, a football player taking a hit to the chest going down on the field. This is something that um, we've seen before, at least, you know, or at least read about and heard about being from Sutton, Massachusetts. Um, we had a we had a person from we had a kid from our own town, Mike Elsesser. Um, 16 years of age, playing in a JV football game for um, then at the time the co-op uh, Oxford and Sutton High School. Um, I I read it was on the second play of the game. Uh, he was a receiver, took a hit to the chest, went down. Um, the ref was performing, you know, uh, CPR on the field. They took him to the hospital. The you know doctors there worked on him for 45 minutes, and they weren't able to revive him. So, this is something where I think you were the person who uh, I think you initially said this is like Mike. And, and, you know, it, in that moment, it was like, wow, like I didn't think I'd actually see something like that ever again to where it was a direct hit to the chest. And, you know, someone went into this episode. Yeah, I, I did. That was me who said that. But the only difference is that Hamlin is in the NFL and he has all these professionals surrounding him. Thank God, because if it was not the, if if it wasn't that case, if this was a high school or JV game. You might have one paramedic and they're probably not seasoned like those that get the chance to work. Um, no, yeah. These NFL games. Yeah, and these guys are these guys are I mean, not only do you have the paramedics though, you also have the you also have the team doctors from both teams and the trainers. Yeah, so I mean, you have like the best of the best staff and you know, the other thing too which I thought was a great sign at the time, obviously, you know, Hamlin's condition is still um you know to to be determined, but um, something that I thought was good that they had was the AED there. Cause I know in the case of Mike, he didn't have an AED present. Um, and that, you know, evidently, you know, you know, potentially could have resulted in his loss of life there. Yeah. I read somewhere that they have at least three AEDs on the field level. And then they have obviously one, the ambulance, there's probably one on the, tr the trainers and the equipment and things like that. So, yeah. And I mean, what's crazy about it too is, you know, we saw this whole thing break down on the field. We saw, um, you know, the players huddled around him, you know, basically shielding him from any media, which, you know, I think was good. The fact that, you know, there weren't camera angles of this because, um, you know, a guy getting revived like that, that's pretty, it can be pretty gruesome, especially for people to watch. And it's, it's very difficult. The fact that his own teammates had to watch that, but, um, you know, it explains kind of the shock that you saw in those guys face. Like Josh Allen was brought to tears. Um, other guys just could not speak just like mouths, like open, they could not talk. And I mean, for seeing something like that, it's, you know, completely valid. Yeah, honestly, that's when the switch flipped in my brain. Like this isn't an injury he's getting up from. Yeah. Like I was at the Lions Patriots game and there was a player that got knocked out, went in the ambulance like he was all right. Mm -hmm. Um, but as soon as I saw every player crying, like I knew like this was something that because is... yeah, because I mean, Brian, you you played this game at least at the high school level. You've seen guys get hurt and you know get hurt really bad. Yeah, I've seen a couple like a couple knockouts, some like something like that. But yeah, nothing to this. No, not, obviously factor. nothing to this extent. And, you know, for these guys, too, obviously they've seen injuries like this way more frequently. I mean, maybe you're not getting the ambulance, the ambulance on the field like all the time like this, but you're seeing something of the, you know, you're, you're unfortunately these guys are conditioned to seeing guys get carted off the field. And it's kind of it's just pretty much normalcy to them that the fact they're, they're getting carted off. It's like, you know, it's just another day at the office, unfortunately. And I think that. You know, we, you know, whether it have been, whether it had been like an injury, like a Joe Theismann where it's a broken leg, like we've seen players also cry before about their, you know, teammates getting injured, obviously their teammates, their brother. Um, but what really kind of took me back is the fact that, you know, I don't know too much about DeMar Hamlin. Obviously his impact as a player is not, you know, necessarily too important here. It's, you know, obviously his health and his safety, but when I saw the players reacting to a guy like this, which, um, I've heard that he has some Pro Bowl nods, but frankly, I had I outside of Buffalo, I hadn't really heard of him too much before. When I saw him, when I saw them reacting this way, as opposed to like say a Stephon Diggs, a Josh Allen, a guy that you know you know is going to have an impact on that team, that also kind of set off a switch in my mind to like, oh shoot, this is something that's very serious. Like, like they are now, like this is yeah, this is dire. Yeah, um, I didn't hear of Demar Hamlin at all until like yesterday, yeah. but. Uh... I mean, we did. We ran a couple little things on him, like Joey was saying, a couple hundred yards on him this season, which mm. that's not too bad. A couple Pro Bowl nods, but like you said, it's not a Josh Allen, it's not a Stephon Diggs where you take him out at alters the entire play of the team. So just yeah. to see like everybody coming around him and being like and shocked, yeah, because it it it's just like 
you know, you know, unfortunately you see a guy like that. Typically if, you know, that guy broke his leg, like the team, they're still going to be, you know, real informed, but they're going to be like, all right, time to like gear back up and get ready for this thing. But they knew it was something bigger than just a broken leg or a torn ACL or something of the sort. They knew it was obviously something bigger because they witnessed it. And, you know, you know, as, as we're kind of moving out of this now, like there's been a whole lot of talk as to the response around this. Obviously Hamlin was down on the ground for like over 10 minutes before they could even get him stabilized and into the ambulance. Um, And even after that point, like um, they went to commercial like four times in between that, in between that period of time, like Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, they just hadn't, they just could not say anything on the matter. It was just like, they were just in shock. And when they came back, um, we initially believed that there was going to be five minutes uh, of like break time and they were going to get right back to. And I was like, I was like, that's like, they're going to be able to get back from that. And I, I was just like, I mean, maybe that's a good sign. The fact that, you know, like five minutes, they're going to be able to get back that maybe they saw something that made them say, all right, like he's back up. He's talking to us. He's good. Uh, we're going to get back to playing this game. And, Obviously, then that complete went that went sideways as well. Right. Um. I just think that the players they couldn't deal with it because they they no. did his conditions up in the air. But I also read that the NFL was saying these things to make sure that the ambulance and things of like the emergency vehicles could get out of the stadium. Um. To make sure the fans would stay in. Okay. Because they didn't want the, everybody to rush out. Like you know how much traffic there is. Yeah. And everybody's trying to rush out. So. Um. I think they were also trying to make sure that he could get to the hospital as fast as possible and safely. Mm. I, 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 I wasn't even really thinking about that, but that could potentially be a factor there. Um, but yeah, like just Brian, like, again, like I talked about you, like, you know, p- playing this game, you know, I know, I know we've never really seen an injury like this ever on the field, but just to like, you know, you, you know, you playing this game, like you understand that there is a risk every time that you go out on the field, but you know, how much, like, you know, what is your thoughts after seeing like just all this? Um, honestly, for all these players, I don't think it would really take that out of the game for them mm-hmm. because it is such a freak injury. Like this could happen honestly anywhere that you get hit in the chest at a certain certain part of time. Like it's such a small window that like it's not just the game of football. And I think Ryan Clark said it best. Yeah, I saw him on air. He's saying the way you want if you're gonna live out your dream, you're gonna put your life on the line and I I bet you if hopefully when DeMar Hamlin makes it out of this, I guarantee you that he'll say that he doesn't regret anything he's ever done because this is most of their dreams was to play in the NFL and they're living it. Yeah. And they know what price that they're paying every day with their bodies and their health. Um, But yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. I mean, I guess if, if you do want to see some, you know, some positive outlook on this. Um, Damar Hamlin has a toy, has a toy drive. Um, you know, I originally, I think the goal was like to raise like how much money, like, I, I think it was only a couple thousand. Yeah. Maybe. Something of the sort. It now has like over $4 million in yeah, donations. That was crazy. So, so that's awesome. I'm, I'm really glad for that. So that's, uh, that's fantastic news for him. Um, hopefully he is to recover and, you know, see all, see all the love and support that they've got that he's gotten. I think every NFL team on Twitter has changed their profile picture to something of the sort, like uh pray for DeMar logo or something of the sort. So um, I'm, it's it's really interesting to see the sports world come together like this. It's uh, it's really is something. Yeah, it's um all all the all the teams are gelling together. The NFL is coming together as one, and all the players are, and I really love to see it. Um, unfortunately, there's been some backlash amongst some people in the mm-hmm. field, but for the most part, it's been a good uplifting. Just prayers for Demar. Yeah, that, that's a thing, and I do want to kind of get into some of the backlash that's been going on that's been going on around the league. Uh, mainly about people saying like, hey, like, you know, you should have called this game way sooner. Um, people basically saying like, how did like, how did you ever think that these guys are going to be able to go back out and play in five minutes? Um, you know, t- the NFL has kind of disputed that and basically said like, we never said that they were going to go back out there and play and different things like that. But obviously it's kind of difficult to see that when you see Joe Burrow having his helmet on doing warm up throws and it's like, okay, they at least heard something about like warm up and get ready. And I mean, Listen, I I don't fault the league necessarily on that. I mean, you know, these officials, everyone in the stadium, that's what they're told to do. I mean, this is completely unprecedented what happened last night. A player goes down and usually it's like, okay, this could be really bad. But at some point that whistle's going to blow and the game's going to continue. So I think for, you know, the refs and the people there, you know, they knew like, all right, there's no way in hell like my players are going to be able to go out there on the field and compete and at le- and be in a 
somewhat competent mindset after this, but the league is just like, you know, they're over there in New York. They're trying to make the best call for it. And, you know, usually, usually going by the book, this is the way things go. But I think that, you know, you com- you completely threw the book out with this one. And it makes me wonder just like, what's going to be, what's going to happen going forward. Like, um, if a two a situation, which happened on the same field in Cincinnati, was to happen again, are we going to see a game get postponed? And 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 you know potentially that that might be the right call, but I don't know what this is going to set for a precedent moving forward. Um, and it's really tough to say because it's so new. You know, it just yeah. came out yesterday. But I would say that I I don't see the Bills playing this game at all. I think that. Didn't they just announce that they were canceling the game? Yeah, so that was something that came out just a little while ago. The NFL did announce that the Bills are going to move the – well, they're, they're not going to – the NFL announced that the Bills and Bengals will not play this game this week. So that was okay. what was announced. And, you know, there's a lot of things that could go into play with that. Um, you know, I, I I do wonder what they're going to end up doing because, um, you know, it's not just the Bills and Bengals um, playoffs here at stake. And, you know, obviously while, you know, all thoughts are still out to DeMar Hamlin – there are, you know, there are still implications here. The largest one is his health and, and you know, and hopefully that he can pull through from this. But, you know, the NFL still has to figure out, like, what are we going to do in terms of seeding here? Because it isn't just Buffalo and Cincinnati that's at play. The Patriots play the Bills next week. And if, you know, Buffalo was to win that game, the Patriots are knocked out of the playoffs. If Buffalo's to lose or forfeit, they, the Pats get that last seed. Um, something else I saw, too, is that if the game is ruled a forfeit, um, or just whatever it is by Buffalo or whatever happens, that would actually lock up the AFC North for the Bengals, and then the Ravens essentially are would then just be out of that conversation. So there's this is going to impact a whole lot of teams here. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to think out loud here, but if Hamlin does not make it, which hopefully that does not happen, yeah, that's the but if he can't make it, then I don't know that any NFL team is playing this weekend. Yeah, I would see that the the whole NFL would get postponed at mm-hmm. least a week. Yeah. I mean, obviously the last time something of that magnitude happened was after the September 11th terrorist attacks, the league actually did postpone all games for a week. And what they did to make up for that was the fact that, you know, typically in between the championship games and the Super Bowl, there's a, there's a one week buy. Mm-hmm. that year. They got rid of the one week buy, and they just, you know, you went straight from the championship to the Super Bowl. And that's what they did. I Honestly, they can just get rid of the Pro Bowl. Nobody wants well, to watch the, that. Well, the, the the game, the Pro Bowl game itself is it no longer happens, right? You remember? Oh, they, right, they, right. They, they just it. do the events. It's yeah. just the events now, so they could, in theory, just completely scrap it. Yeah, I I wouldn't see a problem with that at all. Yeah, I mean, they could just scrap that bye week and play the Super Bowl. I mean, the fact that there is no longer a game anymore just means that like there's nothing that the NFL would. There's like, even though the Pro Bowl probably just got horrific numbers. Um, it's not like, it's not like they're going to be missing anything on that day. Like, like they could just get completely just like move the championships and do that. But, um, I, I wonder what that's going to look like. Cause you know, I know some, I know a bunch of other teams were gearing up to play this week. I know that, you know, they're saying all their thoughts and prayers are with this player, but I, I wonder, you know, how this is going to impact, you know, certain teams coming back. Like are, are certain players going to get, you know, rested up and and possibly change some outcomes of games is Lamar Jackson with another week of rest going to potentially be able to play in week 18. Same thing uh, with Jay. I was going to say with Jalen hurts, but not so much because th- their, their seat is locked up at this point, but yeah. um, it, it, that at least gives them another week to be rested for the playoffs yeah. and get healthy. So, um, you know, this impacts more than just, uh, you know, not even the Bengals and the bills, but it impacts more than the AFC. This is the whole league. This is going to impact. Yeah. Especially just the, the extra week to rest is big because yeah. a lot of those players that are dinged up, even, you know, Poyer played yesterday. He was really dinged up. Yeah. You give him an extra week to get healthy. He's a big difference maker on the field. Um, you said Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson obviously is huge. But he, even with that, if the Bengals get this forfeit win, it doesn't even matter if Lamar Jackson comes back. Yeah. So as so, much as I think that the game's not going to get played with the Bills and the Bengals, it kind it kind of has to. No, I yeah. don't know. And, and I mean, you want to know what's what's going to make this even crazier is the fact that you know, depending. As of right now, it seems like KC will take care of the Las Vegas Raiders on Sunday night on, you know, on Sunday. But with the way that the Raiders played against the 49ers, essentially going to toe to toe with them. Jarrett Stidham looked good. Devontae Adams just set the front, just set the single game record for receptions. I mean, the Raiders look like they could play spoiler down the run and, you know, 
if they were to knock off KC, then then the number one C would be at play. So like th- this, I mean, th- I think the NFL, they're just hoping, in, in my opinion, that nothing out of the ordinary happens. Whatever teams were, you know, probably favored to win, they're just hoping that there's no dramatic upset. They're probably going to be praying that Kansas City just takes care of business and that, you know, in their, if they could, they wouldn't play this game. That that That's what they're hoping to do here. Yeah, uh, I don't know, man. The Raiders have been hot. Yeah. They've been playing really well. Um, Derek Carr, obviously, has had a pretty horrific season. Yeah. Uh, but Stedham stepped in right there, just like Brock Purdy has, and just stepped up to the plate. I mean, it's pretty easy when you got Devontae Adams to throw sure. the ball to, honestly. Yeah. But um, I could see I could see a nice knockoff, especially if uh, Jacobs goes for a couple, couple hundred, a couple touchdowns. No, yeah, that potential's there, and then it just makes you wonder what this is gonna hold, what this is gonna look like, because. I mean, is it the Chargers sneaking in, right? If, the Chargers are in. The Chargers, Chargers are in. in. But if Kansas City loses, then the Chargers get the one seed? No, the Bills and the Bengals would be in play for the one. Oh, okay. okay. So that so that's the thing is the fact that those two teams could then be in, potentially in play for the one. So I don't know what you would do after that. I mean, typically in baseball, you have like a game 163 after the season before the playoffs start, and you do something like that. But in baseball, those players are able to, you know, you play 162 games a right. year. You can't do that with football. And, you know, they those guys need usually a minimum four days between a game. So I don't know how they are going to really be able to do this and, you know, determine like, all right, like, like if are they going to have to like maybe push the playoffs off a week, just have Bengals bills and then do this? Like, I don't know. I don't at least in football, my experience, I haven't even played at that high of a level but you need at least a couple days for your body to recover like it feels like you got beat up yeah and so. especially at that speed you you need at least four to five days to recover mm-hmm. so if they were to get that short week if they make them play then that just really puts both teams at a disadvantage never mind uh the fact that they should get a full week yeah and i i just want to say this so i think that the league Ever since that play with Tua on Thursday Night Football happened, I think the league has completely... Is that the the gang sign one? Yeah, where he's throwing yeah. up just like his, his fingers are contorted in all <laughs> different a, directions. That was bad. It was real bad. So I think that... um, I think now, like, since this has happened, I think ever since that play, like, a lot of people are looking at like, these injuries differently. And it's just like, you know, like, these guys could suffer permanent brain damage and you know maybe may not be able to live a normal life after this same thing with a guy like ryan shazier when he got paralyzed it's like what's going to happen to these guys and i think this is going to open up a lot of eyes around the nfl and we're going to see um you know i i think that you could really see some changes coming this offseason you know i think there's going to be some stuff going on in the collective bargaining agreement um i don't know what that's going to look like maybe something with incentives gets messed around with but um, this is gonna this is gonna have a much bigger impact than people realize. Yeah, I think in Tua's situation though, that was a lot on him too. Yeah, because and it, but, but no, I, I wouldn't even say it was on him. I mean, he's a football player. He wants yeah, to he play. Wants to play. Not, that that no, comes back to the no, Ryan no, Clark situation no, that, too. That's malpractice on the organization. He's a football player. He's gonna want to go out there and play. I don't fault Tua for that. I fault the you fault I, the doctors. Yes, I fault the doctors and I fault the organization for throwing him out there in that situation. I. I I mean, you know, it's a different situation with with uh, with Hamlin here because, you know, Tua showed like signs of of a concussion like four days prior, and it w- and they said it was a back injury, and like the, 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 and then I'm pretty sure the private doctor who examined him just got got fired immediately after, so like they they, they ended up saying like, hey, that guy messed up, he had a concussion, he shouldn't have been playing that game. If you're if you're two in that situation though, you don't know, you're gonna listen to those doctors, you're gonna do whatever they say. And I mean, like, again, at the end of the day, he's a football player. He's going to want to go out there and play. Same thing with a guy like Tamar Hamlin. He, he's going to go out there and play. You don't even know if there's anything wrong with him. I mean, like, again, like you said, it's a freak injury. It's something that's really scary to see happen. And I just don't know what's going to happen with the NFL now moving forward. I do know that, you know, there's been a lot of backlash that we talked about with the league. There's been some other guys that have received some backlash as well. Um, Stefan Diggs, I um, weirdly enough, has been getting apparently some heat. I don't get why, but... I guess the uh, but for the precursor to it is that um, after like uh, Hamlin went down, he was seen on the sidelines trying to like rally the troops essentially and like get the team ready to play and go out there and, you know, perform. And I mean, listen, I I, I can understand where, where, where you're saying like, hey, your guy's down like they definitely like those players definitely don't want to go out there and play. But if you're Stefan Diggs, that's like every, every single time a guy has gone down, you've gone out there and played immediately after. 
I mean, he's doing on, on, like he could be scared. He could be scared for his mind, for his, you know, for his teammate out there and really just like really worried. But, you know, he knows that some guy is going to have to make that call. And he, maybe maybe he didn't like having to give that speech, but he thought, all right, if we're going to resume this game, like I need to like I need to like get these guys, you know, focus back in. Like, that's just what happens on a football field. Yeah. Um, again, I think it's stupid that he's getting backlash for this because they don't know. They're not no. paramedics. They're not doctors. They don't know the severity of the situation, really. And maybe he thought in the beginning, like maybe he ended up thinking like, oh, maybe he is going to pull through or hell. Maybe he even sent it. Maybe he ended up saying to them, hey, guys, we're not playing this game. Like, you don't know what he said in that situation. I know a lot of the times. And I mean, like people were commenting on on like people were commenting on that. And I'm just like. This guy took an Uber to the hospital and was bedside with this guy. An ESPN reporter had to tell had to tell a cop, "Hey, let him through. He's his teammate." So, like, yeah. I, I think I think that's ridiculous. What like like people giving him any backlash? That's I just ridiculous. think people nowadays they like to pick apart anything that mm-hmm. they can. Yeah, because obviously he's his teammate. He works out with him every day. Yeah. He knows this guy. He's probably one of his good friends. I mean, he's a wide receiver and he's a DB. They're probably going against yeah, each other and practicing every all day. day. Exactly. I. It's just like if you don't know what's going on, then I just think that it's stupid of the person to comment on. No, absolutely. It's it. It really is stupid. Um. I, I mean, you know, something else that you know people have, uh, that really bugged me as well was people going after T. Higgins. I don't know if you saw this, but people I, I did see people that. have been on commenting. Twitter? On, yeah, on, on Twitter and on his Instagram, they've been commenting and saying and saying like you did this, and I'm like. Yeah, that's so stupid. That, that's he so stupid. That, he hit him right in the chest. Like yeah. that's what you're taught to do. Like, lower yourself. He did. That is one of the cleanest football players I've I've seen. I mean, you want you could talk about Marvin Harrison getting the Derwin James hit last week. What do yeah. you mean? I mean, like there have been plenty of dirty plays across the NFL. I mean, I mean, especially on that field too. If you want to talk about dirty hits that Bengals players have had, oh, I mean, Von. Von- Vontez perfect, you know, almost decapitating Antonio Brown, like, and then Juju hit and back. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can talk about plenty of dirty hits that have happened on that field. That's not one of them. I mean, that is as clean of a football hit as you can say, as you can possibly have. And again, like you said, it's a freak injury. This is something that is like a one in a million chance of happening. It's down to the millisecond. It wasn't even the hit that did it. It was the timing of it. Yeah. So the, the fact that they're coming at him for the head. Is- no, exactly. And I'm just like, like, because something that people don't know is the fact that, you know, if, like he, if you get hit in this rhythm, again, this is under speculation if that happened. If he gets hit in any other time of that heart cycle, he he's gets fine. up. He gets up. He walks it off, and he's getting ready for that next play. And maybe he's maybe he's a little winded there. That's it. Like, that's how crazy of down to the science this is. It's insane. Exactly. Yeah. But um, you know, I saw that. I saw that backlash. And then there was another piece of backlash too that I saw, which, um, you know, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of a mixed bag on right now. It's been the whole uh, situation surrounding Skip Bayless because. Um, after this, he went on Twitter and he ended up saying, no doubt the NFL is considering postponing the rest of this game, but how this late in the season, a game of this magnitude is crucial to the regular season outcome, dot, 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 which suddenly seems so irrelevant. So when I saw this tweet at first, I had to read it like at least three times. Yeah. And because it, because he wrote it terribly. Yeah. He honestly, everybody was getting mad and mad and mad, but. I think he was just like trying to explain I've, the magnitude of the injury. Yeah, I think that's I just I think, it terribly. No, absolutely. I, I, I think he was trying to basically just say it's crazy that a game of this magnitude can, you know, suddenly mean nothing in a matter of minutes. And I think that's what he was trying to say. But because he skipped Bayless, he he just completely butchered it. And it's just like, what are you doing? And I mean, like you have a. Like you don't have to hit the tweet button right away. You can read something over and say, "Does that sound right?" And if if you read that over, and I would say read it aloud, and if it sounds dumb, I would be like, "I'm not going to tweet that." That's. I think it also has a lot to do with the delivery because it's on Twitter. You don't know like the way he would say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. If he said it on air, I think if he was to read that yeah. the way he probably said it on air, it probably would have gotten much less flack. But I mean, you saw guys. It was like RG three, Des Bryant. Um, I think Jalen uh, Jalen J- Mills um even reached yeah. even tweeted out and said like what the hell's wrong with this guy and I mean listen Skip Bayless I I, I will say this he's had some atrocious like you know comments in, in the past you know whether it's going after guys like Shannon Sharp and all these different people um you know on his own show too yeah, so I, I mean say him and Shannon are on the same show yeah so like he goes after all these guys and I mean I I, I think that a lot of the scrutiny he gets is is valid but. I am kind of back and forth on whether this is that case. Uh, I just think that he was 
again. I think he. Trying. I think he was just stupid. I think he was just negligent. Yeah. Like I think that's the word. It's negligence. It's the fact that I would just like because he put out a tweet immediately after, and he en- and he ended up saying like, "Hey, didn't mean to offend anyone. Offend anyone with my last tweet. This guy's health is like all that matters." And it's like, just say that. Just say that because like yeah. that's because that's the fact of the matter. You don't need to put on like this big soliloquy and and try to like say like, "Oh, like look into this and like the grand scheme of things." Like you don't need to paint the picture, man. That's not what you do. Like you're not like this poet. So that that. That was the part that I that that kind of got me with Skip Bayless. It wasn't even the comments. It's the fact that like, like you need to like be that guy all the time. Like, how about you just say like, "Hey, re- prayers up to this guy. Hope he's okay." Just leave it at that. Just toss it out there. If that if you really think that you need to say anything, you don't need to like. Th- this doesn't need to be a. You're not narrating a documentary here. Yeah, I I do think he had to say something though because he's in the sports world. No, absolutely. He need he he's he's a sports figure. He definitely was. You know, he, it's definitely in his job that he needed to report on that. But again, like you said, like or, or like I said, rather, um, it's not like he's narrating. Do- it's, he's not narrating a documentary here. He could have just said, "Hey, I really hope this guy's okay." Scary injury. Yeah. Like, like that's all he. That's all he needed to say. That's all I said when it happened because I mean, we were just learning live as it was going on. We didn't know. We were all just confused, honestly. Yeah, I think. I, I mean, that that's the thing. Like, because we had never seen anything like this, and it's just like, what the hell is going to happen next? And when the teams went off the field, and you know, there was kind of like a bit of a shock there. It was like, what the hell is going on? And I don't want to make you know too much of a comparison to this, but um. This injury, in a sense, kind of reminded me of when the NBA shut down due to COVID. And really, I think this reminded me of the WWE. You ever seen that when the guy yeah. fell off the zip line and died? Okay, yeah, he I, died at Monday Night Raw, and they blue just, blazer. Yeah, they just kept going because they had no idea he was dead. Yeah, that's crazy. No, I this reminded me a little bit of the NBA shutting down due to COVID. Um, just in terms of the feeling that I had when it happened, because um, you know, like because a lot of people had different reactions to it. I mean, there were, I think there was a game involving the Mavericks where um, Mark Cuban's like get Mark Cuban sees the tweet about the league being suspended, but they finished that game. And then a game that was set to tip off like a couple minutes later, I think it was the jazz and the Pelicans. Um, they made everyone evacuate the stadium. So it was, so like you saw like different reactions, people, you know, you know, not knowing really what to feel. And it was kind of those things of where it was like, this is something that we, this is kind of an unprecedented thing. This is something we haven't seen before. And that's kind of what it reminded me of in a sense. And, you know, you know, it's just like, you know, this is a more isolated incident. Obviously COVID was a global thing. Um, But seeing this, it's just like, wow, like you're really like hoping this guy's going to pull through. Yeah. It's just everybody kind of united over the same thing here. Yeah. I'd say it's a little less polarizing than the whole bubble situation. Oh yeah. 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 No, a hundred percent. You know what I mean? No, hundred percent. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just I, I'm it, I'm just in shock as to, about this whole thing because I mean this wasn't just like you know some average just like regular just like season like you know week nine game to where you know I think that there there have been other instances in the past where games have had to be canceled, um and they either play on the bye week or they do something else and they try to figure out like a common date that they could all play, and it just so happened that this that this is happening this late in the season there are no more bye weeks at least at this point so. It's just like, what are we going to do? Yeah, it's kind of the worst timing ever. But yeah. I mean, but unfortunately, the timing isn't really what's important here. The, yeah, the exactly. importance is DeMar Hamlin. Hopefully he is OK. Um, before we do go, though, I want to talk about, you know, you know, we talked about how this impacted a team like the Ravens, you know, briefly touched on the Patriots. Um, but I, you know, this is going to impact the Patriots, obviously, down the line. Um, you know, a- after Sunday's win against the Dolphins, you know, it was you know, kind of a little bit hairy there. We were kind of struggling against Teddy Bridgewater and even Skylar Thompson was, you know, giving us fits at the very end of that game, which is scary enough as it was. Um, But, you know, it makes me wonder, like the Pats right now are technically in control of their own destiny. They play on Sunday against the Bills. And, you know, hopefully, you know, maybe they, hopefully the Bills learn some good news about Tamar Hamlin. The game's able to go off okay and they can go. But what, but, then it makes you wonder. I mean, I I was listening to 98.5, the sports hub, and I think it was Jim Murray or something who brought it up. But, you know, he he said not to sound morbid, but what if you're to find out that, you know, Hamlin isn't OK and, you know, possibly on Sunday they find out that he passes away. I mean, if, you know, not to, it's not only just going to be traumatic to see a guy like that go down on the field. How are they going to be able to even go out on the field and play if they find out that their teammate just died? 
I like, think I mean I, I mean I hate to say I I don't I'm hoping for the best but if this is the case like like this is going to have some really big impacts around the league. I touched on this earlier but I I like I said I don't think anyone's going to play for yeah. at least a week. Um I I think that they'll probably play the week after but mm-hmm. There'll be a lot of things for Demar Hamlin in the league, like Absolutely. people for it. Like there's gonna be a stickers. Patch there. Yeah, they're gonna no. There's gonna be a lot of support for him, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm encouraging all that. I also encourage people maybe if they can to donate to his charity, do whatever they can, support him. You know, hopefully he's able to pull through for. for I really just hope it doesn't come down to that, because yeah, I mean that that's the worst scenario, and I really hope that you can avoid that. Um, I guess if I want to leave it on some good note, on some good news, I mean, um. You know, I was listening to some reports from doctors and they said they've seen patients like this um, have basically the exact same scenario that he went that he underwent and they've been able to make a full recovery from this. So there is at least hope and, you know, the possibility that someone like this can pull through. Yeah, um, they did do CPR almost right away. So Mm -hmm. uh, each minute that you don't do CPR decreases your like survival rate by 10 percent. Yeah, is what I read. So. Mm Since they had so many professionals and they did it almost right away that I assume that he has a very good chance of pulling through. I mean, I, I, really I, w- I would say this if, you know, this is this would the fact that this happened where it did gives him, I think, the best possible chance to come out of it. This is like if you want to talk about the positives and the potential uh, good things, it's the fact that, you know, he's in a he's in an arena surrounded by, you know, you know, probably dozens of medical officials, not only just the people in the ambulances, the doctors. And then once he gets to the hospital, he has all the professionals there. So hopefully he's around enough people to where um, he can be, um, you know, at, you know, this isn't even about him, you know, playing in the NFL. This is just about him living a normal life. So um, I'm hopeful that, you know, maybe he can pull through from this and, you know, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Um, but Bryant, uh, at this point we are now down to the wire. So we're going to review, um, you know, kind of just go over the few things we talked about in this episode and send you guys on your way. Um, obviously, uh, just if you guys want to follow us on, you know, anything we're available on Spotify, Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, all those streaming services. Uh, you can also watch the show live on YouTube and you can find us on Instagram at down dot to the wire again at down dot to the wire on the IG. Um, Brian, you know, this episode, like many sports talk shows around the, around like the country and the world today are focused on DeMar Hamlin, um, you know, highlighted him today. He was, you know, he's 24 years old, six round pick out of pit. Um, they even put out something on him today. So, um, you know, really hoping he pulls through, uh, do you have any final, you know, words? Well, just thank you for having me. It's obviously not the typical podcast that we usually have. Yeah. Um, I'll try to get you back on, you know, for a more, you know, happy and kind of like uplifting kind of episode. But I knew for an episode like this, you know, this needed to be covered. So I yeah, appreciate. I, I, I still appreciate. I still appreciate you for wanting to come on. You know, even with this subject matter. Oh, I love talking sports, no matter what it is. Come on. Now. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously today we talked, you know, mainly about Tamar Hamlin. Hopefully he is able to pull through. We talked about some of the backlash, the players, um, the league, and you know, different people are receiving. So, um, it was a really just you know kind of a kind of just uh, kind of all encompassing about that Um, scary moment around the NFL really hope that he can pull through Um, our thoughts and prayers uh, from down the wire with him. Um, And I guess to just end it off um, from, from DTW, I'm Brian Costa and I'm Brian Johnson. And we hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care. Peace out. Prayers up for tomorrow.